Hello and welcome to Black Steel Prepper. Today I'm showing you my bug out bag. And just for fair warning, I'm not going to be going into too much detail of this bag. I'm probably just going to, um, I'm not going to open the pockets and show every individual item. I want you guys to be creative. Um, I will tell you this. Um, don't go and buy the exact items I bought because it depends on your situation and your climate and everything. So, um, Fair warning, I'm not going into great detail, I'm not showing all the items, I'm going to explain all the items, and uh, I'll show some of the items, and if you guys really want me to go into very much detail, maybe in a later video, I'll go into more detail, um, mainly because this bag is kind of packed pretty tight, so that I don't want to take everything out, and I don't want to have to stuff everything back in. Now, um, that's the price of making videos, you generally have to do that, but for this informational video, I think I'll stick with um, just not going into the pockets and explaining why I have certain items and what I have. I'm going to show some main items, um, all the excess items, um, I'll just explain. So let's get into this video. Alright, so. Um, right here, let me just adjust the camera here, and this, these two pockets here, I have a, in here, as you can see, hold on, let me just see, as you can see, it's hard to get things out, I have a Canadian bandana, as you can see, it's just something I made on Spreadshirt, and if you want custom designs on things like backpacks and this and that, you can go to Spreadshirt.com, great place. Um... Just see, as you can see, it's really hard to stuff. This thing is filled to the brim. And it's hard to zip too. Um, now, on the opposite side, it's too hard to get out, but there's just snacks, and yeah, that's it. There's just two trail mixes in there. Now, going into this primary pocket here, it's not an admin pouch, the admin pouch is on top. Now don't worry, most of these items are in plastic bags, but for this video I took some of them out. As you can see here, here are my glasses. Um, they're pretty expensive, they could be used for barter if nothing else, I don't wear them all the time. Here's some duct tape, you can just use some duct tape. Um, here's a life gear glow stick, very important. Um, mainly to look through the bag, but can be a makeshift shelter light. And here are my quick ass access asthma bump. I also have one in my actual med kit um, that I carry where this is in case um, of an emergency uh, and I need to grab it right away. Um, that happens very rare. I think I had one, I think it was once in my lifetime where I had to get it right away and uh, my asthma can't, can never be lethal. It's activity asthma. It's brought on by um, running and stuff like that and it's not because I'm out of shape it's just because um, uh, I'm not gonna blame it on my parents but <laughs> they smoke and uh, when I was younger they used to smoke in the house and I think that's a factor but um, that's life right but, yeah problems so here we have um, I think it's the Dave Canterbury uh, helped write these medicinal and edible I have the basic tracking coming but uh, that's on the way and it literally took three weeks so I said nah, you know whatever screw it I'm gonna do a video here I have a basic multi-tool um, not gonna go into too much detail it's a multi-tool you need one uh, there you go in the back here you got some maps in my area I I'm gonna refuse to show those because obviously I don't want you guys to know where I live so let's just close up this main pocket it's hard to do this um, now, in here, there's a secret little pocket. I'm not going to go into detail. It's so tightly packed. But this is um, your first line pocket. It's um, things that you have to grab. You can sling to the side and open it and grab it. I might show that at the end of the video. But I have some essential tools that I can easily have access to to signal um, to get working on something and stuff like that. And here is the admin pouch. Now, right here, I got an energized headlamp. Um, energizer. It's pretty good. I got a Coglins um, fire steel. Uh, in the back I got a Mylar blanket. Um, my survival Altoids tin which I might show in the future. 
um, part of the Bob series. Um, I got a sharpening tool um, for some tools that uh, I have in the backpack. I got a friction pen, which is an erasable pen. Um, I also have these mini zip ties, very useful. And that's pretty much it, right in the rain notepad, and that's all. Um, now getting into the side pockets. So you can see, we have a water bottle here. Um, now, what's in there? It, um, there is my primary water filter, which is the Sire, um, and a um, sponge. Now, um, a sponge can be used generally. We have winter here, so you'd boil. You'd be able to get any water from anywhere because it's so. The winter is pretty bad here. So you'd be able to pick up snow and melt it. So, um, but in there for spring and summer, I have a sponge where you can wipe the, the dew, the morning, the water, the moisture on the plants, um, from, uh, the plants. And they produce water when they're exposed to sunlight. Uh, and you can just take it with the sponge and squeeze it into your thing if you can't find water source. Um, now, on the opposite side, I'm going to go, uh, there's a flashlight, which I'm going to show you. i go here in a second. Here is, this is a Mastercraft flashlight. Now, you can strap this on the front of your pack and use it like one of those hands-free lights, or you can use it like a regular hand torch, um, which is... It's a very versatile tool and it's also very water resistant because it's got uh, that. Now, that's very versatile and it's my primary flashlight. I have uh, four flashlights in this, um, one of them being the Archer, Through Night Archer in here. And that's pretty much it for the outside portion. Um, just before we go into the main pack and I stop the video for a second, you got this. Now this I carry with me any season. Ex essentially this is a um, winter jacket, um, a first layer winter jacket, so it would it would be able to keep you warm enough to survive, but it wouldn't you wouldn't be comfortable in it. And this is in case it's it's a very long term, and I have to rely on this in the winter. So this would just be probably slipped on here and I'd be carrying it until I got to my bug out location. Um, or wherever I'm going, whatever. In the top pocket here, I got some lenses for my goggles, which I'll show in another video. And that's all for this portion. So I hope you understood um, what, I, what I was talking about. Now let's get into the main portion of the bag. Now I won't show everything, obviously, because of issues with um, having to put them back in, but uh, that's just me being lazy. I really shouldn't be lazy about it, but um, I don't want to have to do it because I just recently configured this bag and it's hard to get everything back in. So now, as you can see, it's loaded with stuff. Um, now, what you have up here, um, which you really can't see, so after this I'll just flip it around, we'll do the main portion. So this is a hygiene kit. Now, as you can see, it's really big. Um, that's because I needed it to stay flat so I can compress it with all the gear that I had. I have kept in here. Um, and basically what it carries is personal hygiene, which is definitely needed, and area hygiene. So... Um, a lot, a lot of kits include this stuff where you would clean your bug out location or wherever you're taking makes you shelter in because bacteria builds up. You don't want to get sick during your trek to your bug out location, and depending on the the distance, um, it might be very long till you get there, and you definitely don't want to get sick. So, in there, I have a magic eraser. I have a set of um, nitrile gloves. I have a wet ones, um, 15 wipes. Now it should be good because you can reuse them. 
um, a couple of times before you have to dispose of them. And at the back I have like a ShamWow type thing, which is like a really absorbent thing which you can also use to get water. And I also have disposable bags um, for garbage, as well as disposable Ziploc bags which are sometimes easier than actually using the garbage bags. And inside the hygiene kit I got some campers toilet paper, traveler's toilet paper, sorry, not campers toilet paper. Um, I got a toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, hand sanitizer, that type of stuff. Um, okay, um, now moving on uh, to this portion, just gonna get this out of here. Uh, it opened, that's not a good thing, I'll just close it up first. While moving on. Sorry. And now there's a idea that I have to propose. Now, essentially, what I want to talk to you guys about is the idea of a fail-safe. Now, um, a lot of kids I don't see have this. Now, let's put you in a scenario where um, Everything else but this portion of your bag has been stolen, and I have a lock in here, a bag lock, uh, which you can't see, it's out of sight, currently in the top packet. But the idea of a failsafe is that because you have locked and secured your bag, um, which I don't see a lot of people do, I'll explain why after I get to the lock. Um, but not a lot of preppers have a failsafe. Now, essentially, because you've locked this up, um, people have not gotten into your bag, and you still have your bag. And you should be able to sustain yourself on what's in this bag alone. Um, so I'll explain that when I get to the lock, um, the idea of that. So let's keep moving. So in here, because of the failsafe, I have the container so I can boil water. Um, really good. Next, I have my failsafe shelter, which is not my main shelter, uh, but it's my bivy. It's my escape bivy. In here is electronics. Um, under this tin foil is um, a waterproof bag, and why I put a tin foil there is because just for some minor protection against an EMP or something. Because uh, again, as I explained in the um, ur urban street bags versus um, tactical bags video. Um, I believe that one of the most um, possible events that could occur is an EMP because uh, I explained it more in that video you can go and see that. Now in here because of the fail safe you have the Sawyer squeeze which if not used uh, in the filtration system um, can use it on, his own, on its own as a water carrier after you've boiled it in that cup. And the reason I don't nest it is because of the failsafe idea. Here I got some rope. It's some glow-in-the-dark rope. I know that might be visible, but again, I'm not trying to take the aspect of a, like someone who's going to be super stealthy. Um, now moving on, uh, maybe out of sight. I'm just going to try and move it up. Now over here, you got um, this is the Esbit stove with the Esbit. Um, fire starters for cooking. Now again, I said I wasn't stealthy, but if I wanted to keep a low profile, um, you use the Esbit stove, it would uh, reduce the footprint a lot. Um, that's about it for that. Next is my failsafe water filter, um, which is the Life Straw. Um, and the reason it's not out of the package is because it can last for a very long time inside the package and it'll last for five years outside of the package. So if it's in the package, it'll be fine for, I th I would assume for prepping for double the five years, so 10 years would be good for. Um, but essentially for um, lifeboat standards and stuff like that, it would only be good for five years. So they would throw it out afterwards. Anyways, moving on, I have over there, as you can see, some work gloves and the pocket shot. I don't need to go into detail with that. You probably know what that is. If not, just look it up. you find great reviews. Um, I don't carry any um, ammo for it because um, uh, that's a little bit 
uh, excessive, I believe, and it's dangerous. Um, uh, I will remind you, it is not a toy. Um, so if you're a younger prepper like me, um, get first of all, get parental consent. And second of all, it's not a toy. Don't play with it, um, etc., whatever. Um, now, continuing on. Um, I have down here, as you can see, the blue little thing here. That's food. I carry a package of beef jerky for protein uh, for, for like on the go. Um, so just the snack on. And I have beans and rice in there to cook. Uh, I will be including bars into the in, into the package, um, but I just haven't had time to get it, so I'll get that soon. Behind, I'm not going to take out all this stuff because just behind there is just a goal zero and a Baco Laplander um, saw. That's all uh, for processing wood and stuff like that. Um, now over here you have a Silcock um, um, faucet wrench. Um, the Urban Prepper gives a great um, analysis of this because essentially you have you see these uh, faucets without valves, and you can get to water in an urban environment like that. Over here, you got a you got a fish mouth opener thing, and that holds the mouth of the fish open after you've uh, gone fishing. And essentially, it's just getting this entire thing into view. Um, it's, it's just here, as you can see. Um, which is used in the drilled things for the drilled holes here and it also can be attached to this bottle for boiling water Now over here you got a Mastercraft um, Screwdriver Which is very handy in building things and taking things apart in urban areas Down below the fish thing is a hammer. It's a claw hammer a mini claw hammer. This is very useful over here is a shake flashlight um it's very useful. Over here um, is just a little cheap old black light, and I'll, in a video coming up of the House of Utilities, I'll explain what that is for, along with why you should every prepper should have that in their backpack. Over here, you just got a quick little nifty pen. It's gold plated, so it can be bartered. Um, in here, you got some stuff. Some zip ties, which also I'll show in the back has some great zip ties. Now for the um, front pocket. Now, how are we gonna do this? I think we'll just move the um, camera round. Yeah, let's just let's just uh, try to get it up here. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm just gonna move the camera. It's gonna be is you here? It's so please to stand up. Oh, I just wish I could cut this out. Sorry, my computer's not working, so I gotta do this on the phone. It's kind of dreadful. So, anyways, I'll just hold it up. So, as you can see, there's a lock in there. Now, I'm gonna go into explaining why I keep a lock. Essentially, you know, you see in movies and stuff like that about SHGF, um, there's always going to be that marauder who comes up to you and, you know, yeah, God forbid in an SHGF or something similar, they try to force you to give the, you, force you to give your gear to them uh, via violence, which I don't appreciate, appreciate, I don't really like violence. Um... So yeah, essentially, those are the people who are going, well, those are the stupid people. I'm um, sad to say the people who think they're going to maraud and they're going to try to take your stuff. Obviously, you guys have self-defense and hopefully you'll be able to, um, I guess, employ that self-defense in a situation like that and protect yourself. Now, the people who are going to get to your gear are the backstabbers. Now, you see this in a lot of games and a lot of movies um, where there's that one person in the group who gets you to really trust them and then they backstab you. Um, now, let's face it, um, in an SHGF or a long-term disaster, 
no one's going to be that lone wolf who's going to go on their own and just, um, you know, just go and be on their own and survive for years and years. You're going to have to rely on people, trust people you wouldn't normally trust. Um, and essentially, there's going to be that person, I'm guaranteeing you, in a long-term survival scenario, who's going to befriend you, and you're going to trust them, and when you're gone out hunting, uh, one day, magically, your stuff will be gone. And that's why I keep a lock. Now, uh, although this will not, they could obviously cut the entire bag open if they really wanted to get your gear, but this will hopefully, um, if they're stupid, um, it'll prevent them from stealing from you. Um, and that is the idea behind this lock. So, and essentially, if they do still try to steal for you, and they don't go through the, through the precautions of ripping through your bag, um, I don't know, um, then you'll have this fail safe now. Essentially, imagine everything else from your bag is stripped. Now, these would essentially have another of the five C's, shelter, cover, I mean, uh, candling and whatever and whatnot. Um, that stuff is what you need. Um, so essentially that's what that is. And, um, so essentially that's protecting your fail safe. A lot of people will employ self-defense methods and you know the prepper, you know preppers, you know what I'm talking about. The ones who, um, stockpile all these bullets and guns and stuff like that, but you're missing the basics. Your bug-up bag has to be protected in, in the most basic means. Essentially, uh, a lock for your bag. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Now, so that's why I keep a lock on my bag. Um, hopefully there'll never be a point where I leave my bag behind, but that lock also can be for use for a locker, so I can lock a locker with that lock as well. Um, now, inside that pocket, other than the lock, which has a long speech to go with it, there's a little uh, Doberman security uh, door thing that oh, um, that's an alarm, door alarm, um, an adhesive one. Now, I don't see a lot of preppers put these in their backpacks because A, can be used for a signaling device if emergency because they're very loud, louder than any whistle, and B, you, in your makeshift um, camps when you're getting to your bug up location, um, they'll be very handy for you um, to eventually um, to protect yourself. Uh, I only put one in there because it's an urban environment, so I'd be taking shelters in abandoned houses and things like that. And therefore, I would just need to set up a tripwire in front of a door, and I would good. And that's it for, for that. Now moving on, there's some, on the top you can see there's some eating utensils. Then there's some gathering bags, which are small, large, and medium sized Ziploc bags, which can be used for gathering. Now, moving on, there's a sewing kit in there, which is part of the tools, but, you know, it's a plastic sewing kit and I don't want it to get crushed by all the heavy metal things that are in there, so I just left it in there. And next, there's my iPhone that's waterproofed in there, um, in a waterproof bag. Now, essentially, this has the military survival GPS um, by store bought milk apps, I believe, and it is very useful and has all the information I need. Along with that, I have an extra SIM card that it has a plan registered on it. It's my old phone because I got a new phone this Christmas, and also an iPhone tool. Every other um, phone that you can um, put the SIM card in requires no tool, but the iPhone, being the iPhone, it requires a tool to open the SIM card slot. So I just kept those in there so that I, if there wasn't an EMP, um, I the only reason I didn't EMP proof it with the rest is because of the size, as well as the fact that if um, there were to be an EMP, the phone lines would be down, and I already have an iPod for my music and stuff in there. So, it's pointless to EMP proof that. I would just toss it in the end. So, um, that's about it um, for that.
Now, sorry I didn't go into too much detail, it's because I didn't really want to take this apart. But sometime in the future, I'll go into more detail. Obviously, there's some items that I'm missing. Maybe when I'm 100% done, I'll uh, be more inclined to go into a full detail thing. Now, there's a medical kit there. Inside there is everything you need from scrapes to large lacerations. Um, nothing more. I'm not going to prep for gunshots and stuff like that. Um, because, again, I am a more practical prepper, so. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. It's my, been my bug out bag video um, for now. Uh, if you guys want more detail, please like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments. Um, eventually, I will be going in more detail over what I have. But, for the moment, I'm out. See you guys next time. Happy prepping. Hey guys, welcome back. I just forgot to touch my shelter. Um, now, the shelter takes place in the water bladder um, part of the bag. Um, because I said in another video, I think it was the last video I made, that the water bladder, if it's not full, it sloshes around and makes so much noise. So, although I'm not going for a stealth approach, I don't want to have that much attention drawn to me um, because of the noise. So, instead, I slipped in a drop tarp, um, which can be used as a shelter, a drop sheet, a wool blanket, some garbage bags, contractor bags, sorry, and some cheap st tent stakes. So that's it. I just wanted to add that to the video. Thanks guys, and happy prepping.